Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is the first pour day. We will have two pours on this particular location. There's the fiber mesh going in. That's four pounds, two pound bags. I put that in every job. What it does is it really uh, prevents a lot of the shrinkage cracks that you get, you know, in the first week or two. That's what it's preventing, you know, quick drying and getting sh shrinkage cracks before you can get your control joints in. This particular concrete is a color concrete. It's a dune and it's made by Davis. It's an integral color. We're using 3000 PSI and whenever you use a, a higher PSI that means you got to add more color. So it costs more but you get a better product. Now I don't have any dobies under this rebar as you can see. But whenever you're pouring you know four inches uh, four and a half inches thick if you get a full size doby in there the rebar is too high so what that means is that rebar is going to crack right through the surface when you get it up too high so if you're going to have it anywhere you're better off having it low so we'll just pick it up as we go through here we'll take it about an inch off the bottom they just don't make dobies one inch thick unfortunately Now what we have there is a 2x4 aluminum straight edge. That's what we're going to screech this off with. I don't have to keep looking for a straight 2x4. I just keep those. I keep a 10 and a 12 footer aluminum. And that pretty much covers everything. And then of course I got the 6 foot Milwaukee red stick. So basically I've got a 6, 10 and 12. Anything below that you can just freehand. That's a four foot magnesium bowl float with a rocker arm on it. As you can see I've got the vinyl post in in the background here. Off the reflection of that window. And you can see how that tape at the bottom uh, is catching a lot of that build up around those posts. So that worked out good. And this is going down about a four inch slump. You can see that uh, it's very difficult to rod and it's not really bow floating that easily. And the beauty of that when you pour it stiff, especially with color, you actually get the color. So I mean if you go with a six inch slump with color, you're not going to have that color that's on the chart. It's going to be really washed out. So, I mean, you could, like, say you do want to pour a six. You could just say, well, you know, let's just add a couple more pounds of color, make up for that washout. But then it's a guessing game. So, you know, you're better off just trying to keep it stiff, going by the chart. Especially if you've got a dual pour and you have to match the color. You really don't want to play the guessing game. So in this case, it's a two-pour. We're going to stick to the books on it. This little area to the right looks like a planter area. It's actually going to be artificial turf because this is the enclosed dog run area. So they have some artificial turf there to do the business on. There's your initial lay down. Oh, by the way, the winners for the Ariat gift cards are Eddie Money193, Matt Janky, and Kev Sal. $100 gift card winners at Ariat. Contact me any way you want and then I'll send you the digital code Here's a long straight edge cutter and that baby's running about two inch deep now if that rebar was on Dobies, Guess what that thing wouldn't go in Now 
and you'll be bouncing off the top and when you run your three quarter on the end on your off it when you kneeboard it you're going to be bouncing off the bars as well and it's just a real can of worms basically that's a three quarter deep half inch radius you know what I like to do on these joints even though I typically don't do a lot of hand joining because they never really turn out that straight and they have a tendency to hold a lot of water and water and joints setting it causes stains because you have mineral deposits you have dark color mineral deposits are usually a light color if you have dark concrete you end up with a, an eyesore in a few years so saw cuts retain less water less staining we have a minimal joint pattern here but what I also do on these joints I'd either end when I come in here to do the cleanup I'll drop uh, off the corners on each end I'll drop a, a concrete cutoff saw and really deepen these that way I assure that it will crack on those locations But in the end, you know what they say, ice cream melts and concrete cracks. Not a whole lot you can do about it. The way this back patio drains is actually drains backwards off the hillside. And then off the hillside, there's a little channel we created to a drain that actually takes it out to the front street. And then when you get on the concrete early, the big knee boards come in handy because you don't have to, they don't sink. Like if you get your metal sliders, they don't cover that much square footage on the bottom of them. So with the weight in comparison, you're gonna sink create holes and a little bit more hand floating work so this is just your first lay down right here it's kind of cleaning up the perimeter um, getting your joints nice and clean and then you'll have a final pass and right behind that you'll have your stamps going down in this case we're using a seamless Belgian slate texture and we're using a liquid clear liquid release so that means it's going to be one color but when you get the crevices and the shading and as it patinas out over time you end up with more than one color in the long run there's your liquid release has a nice bubblegum bubble gum scent to it and you're not dealing with dust mask like if you're using a secondary color unless you go with a, a liquid um, color you could even come back to stain it after this if you'd like but otherwise you're gonna if you're trying to two-tone it with the dust you're gonna uh, be wearing a dust mask at this point point. and dust masks are really hard to come by right now for some reason And this concrete actually dried um, backwards from the end to the beginning. We try not to spray that out in front of us too much because by the time you get there, it may evaporate on you. And then you have to double spray it. And 
Now, as I'm stamping it, and there is some grain in these, some actual veins that run a certain direction in these mats. And you can tell by the direction of the veins, um, the way that uh, they stamp their, whoever the maker of the stamp is, they stamp it in one direction, the opposite direction of the veins. So if you keep rotating those and make sure that the stamp that's on the top of the mat is not in the same direction as your other mat, you won't have a repetitive pattern, in other words. or the veins going all in the same direction unless you want all the veins to run one direction then you would intentionally do it that way but this particular um, texture is probably a medium in comparison to all your seamless texture mats I would say this is about a medium deep it's not light and it's not real heavy like if you get into some Italian slate, it's super light. Or if you get all the way into the old granite, then it's super coarse. With some super deep veins in it. You can see here the veins directional there. The way I work these picket vinyls and also the wrought iron fencing, the way I determine the height from the bottom rail of the concrete is the spacing of the pickets. Whatever the spacing of the pickets is, that's uh, bottom rail to top of concrete. So all the spacings equal throughout. We usually keep about a six inch, four to six inch overlap on all the mats as we go through this. Now in about two weeks, right this time of year, two weeks, you'll about have your final color. But it could take as long as 90 days for the concrete to completely cure out to its color that it's gonna stay. And once it reaches that color that we like and it's all cured out and we have a perfect match on the color chart then we know it's cured out and then we're going we're gonna to put a lacquer based sealer on here wet look we're going to also throw in a little bit of shark's teeth into the lacquer base to give it a little traction so it's still a non-slip You really can't throw the allotted amount they re recommend in your sealer and still blow it through a sprayer because it'll clog. Um, so I usually go half dose on that and then it'll still go through the sprayer fine. Those mats you see laying there is our access to the front. We just kind of use them as knee boards there. Anyway, thanks for watching. This was part two of a five-part series. Stay tuned for the next one because we're going to announce the winner of the reciprocating saw in that one. And uh, we may do another giveaway, maybe on a right-angle grinder or something. Anyway, have a good one. Talk to you later.